This is an extremely important question, so I'm definitely appreciative of whoever asked the question. Um, you know, we're dealing with two different groups here when it comes to affordable housing. We're dealing with the population of low-income families um, who live in this county and help, help make it great like we all do. And then you have the middle class who, um, for reasons that are out of their control, property value and so forth, are slowly getting squeezed out. And, you know, if we all respect and love our community as it is, then we have to do what we can to ensure that those populations are still allowed and able to live in this county. So I would do what I can um, as a board member to ensure that um, housing is available for all those persons. I would have to agree that Arlington is a wonderful place to live and because of this sometimes we are a victim of our own success. We do need to focus and make affordable housing one of our main priorities moving forward. And this is not just only for families, but this is also for individuals. These are for people who make our community more vibrant. These are for people who are home health workers, who are helping people age with dignity in place in their homes. We can do many things to do this. Our county is currently using many tools at their disposal, whether it be bonus density, whether it be AHIF, and the list goes on. But what we need to do in addition is not only build new construction that includes affordable units, but to get in front of current owners to see where they are today, see if they're at risk, see if they're going to sell, and see if we can keep and retain those affordable units. Again, there are many ways that we can address this. We can do better, and we will do better. I think in many ways, as we face change, this is the issue for the community. Um, market forces are against it. us. It's really tough. But if we're going to keep Arlington the diverse and uh, vibrant community we love, we've got to have a good supply of affordable housing. And it's not just for those with low, low income levels, but those with medium income levels. Many of us of my age, our children can't even afford to live here. And what kind of a community can't afford to have its children live with us? Um, so we need to work on this. I think we have to first uh, really approach um, it with planning. Are we going to really commit? Is it important enough that we're going to put the resources there we need to? Right now we're doing a lot, but we're not doing enough. So clearly we're going to have to do something different. We do need to stay ahead. We need to work with the existing housing stock folks and make sure that they have uh, loans and benefits that can help them continue to provide affordable housing. We need to do the bonus density. But I think we also need probably to be thinking outside of the box. Because as I say, the results we're getting are not sufficient. And if we want to be the kind of community we want in 20 years, we're going to have to do some things differently. First of all, it's worth saying that if it were easy to solve the problems with affordable housing, we'd already be doing it, wouldn't we? We wouldn't be having this struggle for years. So if nothing else, that makes it clear, as we already probably are mostly knew, that it's, it is a challenge. Um, I think that first of all, you know, you know, people have talked about the incentives, the affordable housing bonus, for example, and other features that we have. We certainly need to revisit that and see, you know, within the zoning ordinance, how you can, you're limited in Virginia what you can do, okay, under the Dillon rule and what have you. We have limited tools. One in which we do have some control over, obviously, is incentivizing. Um, the density is not always the answer, and I can tell you, having looked at more than 50 projects, okay, of one type or another in the last seven years through site plan. Everybody gets concerned about height and density. I would also suggest that we need to reconvene the housing uh, roundtable from several years ago and look to change the housing ordinance in a negotiated manner amongst all the groups to have a more impactful change and benefit both sides. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Affordable housing is one of my very top priorities, as it has been since I began work on it in 2004. In that time, I have helped to create the port some of the portfolio of both programs, policies, and resources that we use in affordable housing, uh, from building partnerships both with nonprofit providers and for-profit providers uh, in order to preserve and to create new affordable housing, to our affordable housing ordinance, which is the strongest in the state that guarantees what has turned out to be more than $25 million worth of affordable housing benefits <laughs> since it was enacted in 2006. Looking forward, we do need more tools. And in addition to the, the uh, work that's being done along the Columbia Pike um, corridor to look at new innovative, innovative tools, 
I have worked at the national level with Smart Growth America, at the state and regional level with the Coalition for Smarter Growth, and as an advocate with the Virginia Housing Coalition and Housing Virginia in order to get more state resources like the Statewide Housing Trust Fund uh, to help match what we do locally as well as to get more protections in zoning.